Hi beauties, welcome back. If you're new, hi, I'm Jess, become a part of our family. So today, as it is, you know, almost Halloween, so we are back today and I am doing another sort of Reddit style video. If you haven't already checked out Royal Yes or Royal Mess, it's up the top there. Revenge is a dish best they've called that video. Go check it out. Um, you guys really liked it, so we're back again. This time we have gone for TikTok. That's right. So I've gone on to TikTok. I've put in the little searchy bar the stuff that I need to find. I haven't even watched any of these videos. I've just seen the title or the first sentence of Am I the A-hole for? And then just added it, added it, added it to my list. And we are going to go through them together today. Now this is going to be a mixture. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up talking and we're just going to get into some spooky fun. Costume, but still keeping the fabrics. I, 22 female, have been making mine, my sister's, and sometimes my friend's Halloween costumes for a while. Okay. My best friend Amy, 21 female, has always asked me to make her costumes, but I have time since I work part time, go to college, and have to do several costumes. Okay. And she always waits until October to tell me she wants one. <sighs> this year I began working in July. I told okay. Amy if she wanted a costume to tell me sooner rather than later. Yeah, so makes this sense. Year my sister's costume will take time. She's going as Megara from Hercules. Okay. The costume is more elaborate than in the movie. Yeah. So in case I have more commissions, I can have her as priority. In August, she decides for a costume. I sketch a few designs, but she doesn't like any of them. So okay. she changed the costume around three times and decides to be Poison Ivy and picks a design. Okay. This is already mid-August, so I tell her we should go downtown and pick fabrics. She never replies, and to be honest, I forget. In the meantime, I get a two commissions of some easy costumes. Okay. With approved sketches and fabric spot and prepaid. So My people are actually... already done, and I'm currently working on those. Until I get a text back from Amy two weeks ago, asking me how is the costume going, I told her she never replied about the fabrics, and she knows I prefer the client buy the fabric themselves, or I buy it with them in case they don't like the texture, are allergic or sensitive to it. She says she forgot that she trusts me with the fabrics and she won't give me the money. I told her that I would have to hurry if I want to have it done by the end of October. I get the fabrics the next day. She pays me and I tell her to come to my apartment so I can measure her and if she can pay the 50% up front I always charge. Yep. She tells me she can't come and to eyeball it to use my own measurements and it'll probably be fine. I insist but she refuses. Okay. So I begin crafting the bustle and the top that has a design in the front and I have an outline of the leggings. I ask her Monday to come to try them on. Yeah. She comes until yesterday, and turn out, the top doesn't fit. Makes and sense. The fabric is useless due to the vinyl, so I have to measure her and buy more fabric. The pants are too short, but they can be fixed. I also ask for the money since I started working. Yes. And she drops the bomb. She needed the costume for October 6th, which is impossible. I told her I wouldn't do it and I don't have time. Yep. I told her to keep the top and skirt and find another seamstress yep. to fix the top and do the rest. She asks for the rest of the fabric and I tell her I no. will keep it since she never paid me for the work yep. that I had already done in the materials like buttons, zipper and vinyl I had used. She called me cheap and lazy and left. My roommate told me I was in butthole for not giving her the fabric since it was mostly scraps and she technically paid for it. But I think the fabric is collateral for the time spent and she also walked away with part of the costume. And so, first of all, first of all, first of all, okay, let's, let's just wind up. So, you take, you know, your kindness that you have and you decide that, hey, I've got, you know, other stuff that I'm doing in regards to making a costume, but I'll add you to the list. Even though she knows that you can be a bit, she still added you to her list. She then um, tries her best to help you get the right fabrics and measurements and you decide to not show up to that appointment and expect her to know and remember that for you. Okay, yes, like I get you. the fact that she should have remembered to do that, but she did reach out and she did ask and the lady never got back to her. So I don't think she's the a-hole. I think that what she gave her was actually pretty reasonable the fact that she said no, no no i can't do it by the date that you want however you can keep the stuff that i've already pre-made for you and go find somewhere else which is a lot nicer than what other people would do so no i don't think you're the a-hole and also i'm giving this a real yes yes good for you girl for sticking up for some hard-earned time and effort that you put into it like Fabrics aren't cheap. Making stuff like that isn't cheap. I mean, I'm not a designer myself, but as someone 
who is part of the creative world in one way or another. Even I know that they have a hard time with certain elements and nothing goes the way it's supposed to unless you have fittings, unless you make sure you have constant meetings about it, make sure that you're always on the same page. So yes, I'm... Am I in the wrong? I demanded my husband never invite his friend to our party because his girlfriend ruined it for me. My okay. husband, M30, and I, F27, had hosted a Halloween party last night. We had a bunch of people over in our house. Okay. He invited his best friend, Sean, M30, and his girlfriend, Daria, F30. Okay. The night would have been great if not for Daria. I oh, know. She'd pay more attention to the host, but beyond the introduction, she didn't really pay any attention to me. We haven't met before. Okay. In our friends group, ladies naturally keep together. Yes. Something that happened naturally. We'll always chat, have yep. some wine. But Daria wasn't keen on that. She played cards with some guys. Okay. They played cards against humanity. Awful game if you ask me. No. She did shots with them. She looked like she was trying too hard and quite frankly, she looked ridiculous. When she was talking to another lady, I came over and she didn't even try to include me in the conversation and okay. probably left to talk to others. I was telling a friend how inappropriate Daria's costume was. Zombie Barry doll. And how her dress was too short and hair a mess and she heard me. She wasn't supposed to. And she called me a stuck up female dog. Honestly, yep. all night. She was behaving like she was 29 or 30. Uh... It was really rubbing me the wrong way. Then then the guys wanted to go to town and age at some pubs and a club and I didn't really want to do that so we voted. It was even and then we remembered Daria was in the toilet so we waited for her to come down and vote. When she did I asked her for her vote with a strong emphasis on how I need her to vote, stay, and she said she wanted to go. I think she did it to spite me but can't prove it. I was really angry no. and she ruined the night. This morning I told my husband that I'll never want to see her ever again and she's never to set foot in my house. My husband told me I'm overreacting and I was a female dog all night because I was jealous. Yes. He said I'm ridiculous if I think he's going to tell his friend that he can't bring his girlfriend. I said thank he should and she was mean and child sire. I called him a prick and made him sleep in the guest room. I'm torn. She was mean to me all night but he says I'm in the wrong. Ida, Stop. I'm in the wrong. I demand... Stop. Okay, first of all, automatically jealousy overloaded. Listen, not every girl is going to want to be a part of the sort of girl bubble of girls always have to stick together and we have to chat and have fun and be friendly and girls are here, guys are there. Whether relationships are involved or not, personally, I think that you are jealous. Like, a hundred percent. If you are that jealous of a, another female being around guys or even around your husband, that just shows that you do not trust your husband enough and you are slightly insecure. Now, it's okay to be insecure. That is absolutely fine. However, you are definitely showing more of a jealous side. I understand that, you know, ma females being around male friends and hang being really buddy-buddy and close, you know, like one of the guys, quotations, um, as the terminology is, can be a bit of a, like, a sus-sus situation, you know, because you don't want any of the guys to be attracted to that and, you know, maybe a bit weird that she's hanging around all the time. However, you have to trust in your man or your husband, should I say. You guys made a vow that you would love and care for each other when you got married. So you should put trust in your husband that whether or not there's a female around, a granny around, another guy around, you should have trust in him to do the right thing. If you are that insecure and you cannot trust your husband to have female friends, then there is a problem that stems deeper than the surface level. Like, I personally, I, I understand her feelings and point of views because I personally would, doesn't, don't really like my partner having female friends. However, I trust him. So I don't really get too hung up on it. Let me tell you this from a guy's point of view. If a female is one of the guys, they will not find her attractive. They see her as a bro. They see her as a brother or sister. They get friend zoned immediately. You know, men just prefer to have a wee female as someone they love, they cherish, you know, have fun with, but they have their own personal lives and she has her own personal life. It's like a boundary of the middle point of, yes, we communicate, have the same interests, but we are our own people. I am more than friendly with guys. I'm going to tell you now, right? I was one of the guys, always like chilling around, hanging with guys. I had more male friends than female friends, but none of them wanted to date me. So... I do think that you are being slightly overdramatic. I mean, you did talk about her and expected her not to hear you. So she has every right to call you a bitch since you did end up telling, like, you know, you end up slagging her off behind her back. 
So she has every right to be mad at you for that. And absolutely, if she wants to hang out and go for drinks, that's fine. I mean, I do think that she should have, you know, since she was a host, I do think she should have chatted with you and spent time with you as well. But at the same time, you hosted a party. So although she should have said, hey, how are you doing? Thanks for inviting me. She shouldn't have to be around your neck like a little puppy dog always wanting to be in your corner and clustering together because that's a really bad stereotype. Like not all girls and guys want to cluster together in their own little groups. Like they can mix, okay? Male and female can be friends. It is possible. I know that society has taught you that men and female cannot be friends because of whatever movie you've seen and what Lulu energy you are on. But trust me, men and female can just be friends, okay? They can be friends. There doesn't have to be that that energy, that feeling there. I am telling you now, as a woman, it can happen, okay? Okay, we don't need to be the lululu, we don't need to be crazy, we need to take a step back and be that neutral ground, we need to be dirt, dust, neutral. Moving on, oh by the way, actually before I do, royal mess, 100% royal mess. For making my son pass out the candy he got from trick or treating because he was being rude. My son is 9 years old. We went trick or treating and the night was going well except when okay. we got to a house that had a bowl of candy sitting on the porch. Right, it take said, one. take two please. He puts his whole hand in there and grabs about six pieces. Of course, I corrected him and made him put four of them back. Fair. And he needed to leave some for others. Yeah, that's fine. From then on, he had an attitude, and the last straw was when I told him to stop grabbing so much candy from people, and he screamed, no. We had only been out for an hour or so, so I took him right on home. I took his bag, dumped it in a bowl, and told him to come sit outside on the porch with me. Mm. He objected as kids came by and took handfuls. Am I the asshole for making so, myself pass out the candy he got? Stop. Okay, so first of all, do I think you're an a-hole? A little bit. I mean, he is a child. I know when I was a child that I, like, saw candy and I was like, mm -hmm. I want it all, you know? Um, I do understand teaching him respect and boundaries for if someone says, you know, take one or just take two, to do that. Do I think you should have made him give away his candy? No, because that's his hard-earned candy, okay? Never take a kid's candy. He dressed up, he went door-to-door -door with his tiny little feet running along like freaking Chucky, and he got candy, so good for him. I think the best way to go about it, rather than making him get rid of his candy as, like, a punishment, would be to sit down and have a talk with him on his level, because... Sometimes people talk to children from up here and the kid is down here. Child is not going to understand you when you are up here. If you get down on a child's level and you get eye to eye with them and you are on their level and you're like, listen, I completely understand why you wanted to take loads of candy because it's Halloween and you, you know, you want to have fun and that's fine. However, if there is instructions that stay, take one or take two, we must follow them. We must follow the rules that are set in place in order to be fair to other people. That's kind of the way you want to go. I mean, you don't, again, I'm not a mother, so I can't really say, but that's how I would go about it. You need to reestablish that you are the parent, but you do understand where he's coming from as a child, because you probably were there at one point and you probably did exactly what he did if not more, and your mother tried to have this same conversation with you, and because it didn't go well, you are now reciprocating that cycle towards your child, okay? Let me make this clear. You do not always have to follow in your parents' footsteps. If your mother doesn't give you the right respect when you were younger, do better, okay? Learn that when you have a child that, no, I am not going to follow in the same footsteps as my parents. I am going to do better for myself. I am going to be the mother that my mother or father or aunt or uncle was never to me. So then that child can grow up having a better outcome in life and probably be more successful than you ever were. You have to praise your kids, but at the same time, teach them boundaries and discipline that they're going to understand. If you're up here, you know, going like, no, 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 you're wrong. Give me the candy. I'm selling it. You are just teaching your kid that not only can he not trust you and come to you about stuff, but you're also teaching him that he doesn't deserve the stuff that he's worked for and earned for. Whether he was in the wrong or not, it's Halloween. It's a time, you know. So, again, boundaries, different ways to go around it. But, yes, I'm going to say for this one, I'm going to give it the poopy doopy doop royal mess.
Sorry, it's just no. I I don't like it. It's not a good one for me. It's no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Moving on. He's cheating on me. This am I the a hole thread was deleted, but someone captured it and put it in another thread. When men do these am I the a hole threads, they create, they make the post, they speak it from their perspective, mm -hmm. and they still come out looking fairly, fairly terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's read this. I read this this morning before I had my cup of coffee and I was enraged then. I'm going to see if that has changed since I've had my coffee okay. and done my job. Am I the a-hole? Ask my wife to help with the kids. Seems benign and all, mm -hmm. but let's dig a little deeper. My wife, Lisa, and I, both 30s, have three kids under five. Okay. I work full time. Lisa is a stay at home mom with, with an Etsy shop where she makes and sells jewelry as our su supplemental income. Okay. A while back, I received a nice bonus, and after a bit of discussion, it was decided I'd use my bonus for myself. Okay. I managed to stay within budget, but booked myself a two week vacation to Hawaii. Of course, this meant Lisa had the kids at home full time while I was gone. Okay. When I returned, Lisa was exhausted, and I initially agreed to take the kids for an afternoon on Saturday so she could have some time to herself and unwind. Okay. So he gets two weeks. She gets an afternoon, kind of. Mm. My cousin ended up inviting us to a barbecue the same day. My cousin is one of my best friends, and I knew other childhood friends would be there. Lisa wasn't sure about going, but I told her everyone would be happy to see her and the kids. Plus, I'd watch them so she could um, relax and have a drink okay. or two. He'd watch his own kids. The day of the barbecue, the kids were out of control, crying and screaming, fighting, not listening or following directions. It was impossible to have a conversation or catch up with my cousins or friends. Mm. Remember at the top, he has three kids under five years old. Just remember that, three okay. kids under five. I repeatedly walked over to Lisa to ask her to give me a hand with the kids. Each time she declined and said, I agreed to watch yep. them, and this is her down yep. mm -hmm. After another hour of chaos, I ended up yelling across the yard for once. Can you please get off your effing behind and help me with our kids? Just once is all I'm asking. Okay. Lisa stomped over to me and started whisper yelling that I was breaking my promise to let her have time to relax. Mm -hmm, she didn't mm -hmm. want to be here and feel I basically made her go. I tried explaining that these are people I don't see very often yep. and to please mm -hmm. not make a scene. Yep, that's okay. He hollered across the yard. Unfortunately, a few people overheard us and we caught a few comments about Lisa being a lazy mom who only wanted to pawn the kids off on me. She's taking right. advantage of me. Ooh. Lisa burst into tears and yelled at the people standing nearby that made the comments for them to all go to hell, told me to basically F myself, took the car and left. She returned a few hours later to pick me and the kid, pick up me and the kids. Yep. We didn't speak to each other on the drive home. Later that night, I tried talking to her that the kids were having a rough day and I just needed her help for a bit so I could finish a few conversations and that I would have taken them right back. Lisa objected that wasn't fair as she yes. had the kids alone for yep. two weeks oh, yeah. while I was in Hawaii. Yeah. She also said that that's mm. not what upset her the most. It was how I phrased what I said yep. and how I let people insult her oh, yeah, 100%. and then immediately jump to her defense. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. told Lisa that those people don't know her like I do and have no idea how the, hard she works yeah, to take like care of the kids, our house, and run, our, run her Etsy shop. Nor did I have time to react before she ended up leaving. Am I the a hole? This man is. Okay, so. Okay, I am like seething. I'm gonna say this in the nice way possible. If you don't want kids, don't have them, first of all. Second of all, bitch, you went away for two weeks with this bonus that you got, okay? Yeah. I get it that she has an Etsy shop. She was left with three kids for two weeks and a business. So she didn't have you there to help her when she needed a bit of her time. So she was probably stressed as hell trying to do her Etsy orders, trying to make sure her kids are eaten, 
bathed, uh, you know, ready for bed, having, you know, mummy and me time. And the audacity for you to turn around and say, I will look after them if we go so you can relax. And then not following through with a plan that you set is the absolute epitome of why I get really pissed off with men sometimes. Not even joking. If you say you are going to do something, follow through. And an absolute baby when you cannot man up. Yes, I'm saying the word man up to something and follow it through. You don't see me over here making a promise and not following through. I absolutely hate when people do that. If you're going to do something that you said you're going to do, then do it. Unless there is a God forsaken reason that you are like dying, you are like having problems with like, I don't know, disability, or there is a fire, or like, you know, there's some juicy tea next door of your neighbours cheating on someone and you have to listen to it, you know? You said that you would give your wife a break. You went away for two weeks. You do not deserve your dad's e to say, oh, I'm just talking. I'm going to know with the, you deal with it. You do something for once. Excuse me, she did do something. She looked after those kids for two weeks and run her shop and keep the house tidy and do all this other stuff while you sat there and relaxed. I don't think men understand sometimes how hard it is for a woman. Like... Yeah, okay, certain men, you know, work hard for their, their single father, so they, you know, certain men do understand it. But then other times you get these entitled men who think that, oh, now that I've had free time, it means that I can continue to have that free time, even though I have a family and kids. No, it doesn't work like that. We have so much that we do. Like, her mummy instincts is taking over to do stuff. She's cleaning. Um, You know, she literally, you came back. Then went on a trip, uh, then went to like this barbecue. You literally only just come back and then went to a barbecue and you had the audacity to eat. Oh, I don't even want to continue that story because I will say stuff I regret. So, do I think the father is an asshole? Absolutely, yes. Do I think that he's an absolute idiot? Yes, so no. No, 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 no. I, no, this is a poopy poo poo. And the reason I'm giving this a poop is because if it was a woman telling her side, should I say the mother telling her side, I'd be giving her snaps for days because that is disrespectful. Do not disrespect your partner like that. If you are not going to handle a situation maturely, don't bother. Like, don't say something if you're not going to do it. Just don't. Just don't waste your breath. Don't waste your energy. If you aren't going to be that person, then zip it, sit there. You know, and give her fucking money for doing the job that of being two parents rather than one. End of situation. Now, I think we have time for one more, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Am I the a-hole for pointing out how creepy my dad is? Okay. My dad has a fiancé that is 20 years younger than him. Right. He kept the relationship hidden for a while. That's because fair. Because he was nervous about the age gap. Yeah, yeah. They got serious, and he told everyone. Okay. I thought it was 10 years at most. She seemed really mature and acted like she had her life together. Okay. I tried to get to know his new girlfriend and help her learn more about my dad, okay. but things started getting worse. She moved in three months later, and then they were engaged. His girlfriend and I started to not get along. Okay. She was always telling me what to do and how to do things. I right. thought she was just being weird in new situations. Mm -hmm. She seemed nice, and my dad really liked her. Plus, I thought she might genuinely have life experience I didn't. Then it got even worse. She started acting like a brat. She was trying to get me to move across the country for college, even though I had a full ride to the university down the street. She started forgetting to tell me when they would be out for dinner, so I'd make too much food or not make food at all. She told me to sell my car, quit my job, and said I didn't do enough around the house. If I was home, I was home too often, and if I was out, I was out too late. Mm. She would barge into my room. She made my friends feel unwelcome. She convinced my dad to sell the house and buy a smaller one convenient since I had just turned 18 and they could kick me out without legal issues. Oh. Then I found out she's bad-mouthing me to my aunt, saying I didn't understand how to live like an adult and I was lazy even though I'm a straight-A student and a full-fight college nice. athlete with a full-time job. I tried to brush it off. We 
we don't get along, that's fine, as long as my mm -hmm. dad is happy. But then I found out she's only two years older than me. Oh. So while she was acting high and mighty like the second coming of Jesus, she was literally two years older. We went to high 18. school together. She's I like 20, 19, 20? Class. I tried to talk to my dad about it. I felt like she was overbearing. Yep. She was making me feel unwelcome. Yes. She was pulling him away from me when mm -hmm. the two of us used to be close. Okay. He brushed it all off. We've been having this argument for a year. When I brought up that she's not much older mm -hmm. than me, and she has no right to tell me yeah. to do things that are defensive, and said her age was none of my business. So now it's creepy that he's dating someone two years older than his child. Yeah. I don't know if this is a midlife crisis or something. <laughs> but but really, everyone hates this woman. He's marrying her anyway. Half our family isn't coming to the wedding. Wow. He's driving away everyone for this woman. My friends were joking about how I should get a date with someone his age and see how he reacts. Yeah. He has always told me not to date anyone. Oh, do it. Absolutely. Just for the sake it of it. Get a, a friend. Dog, date them. I'm considering it. Do it. Do it. I will do whatever it takes to get this woman as far away from my dad as possible. Even if it means pointing out how creepy he looks. Am I? Okay. So with this one, you are not the a-hole lovely. Okay. You are not. It's a royal yes automatically. Okay, at first I was probably going down the line of maybe you just needed time to adapt to your father having someone else in the life other than you. That was my first point of view. I was like, mm, maybe they're close. She's not used to another female energy. But I feel like this woman is trouble. I smell trouble. I smell that stuff from a mile away. Something seems a little bit sus-sus there. Seems like she definitely wants to cause the... She's definitely purposely trying to cause a rift between you and your father. Um, I definitely think you should date someone older as a joke. Like, even if it's just a friend that you, you know, pay or, or you pay someone or you just find a friend that your father doesn't know of and start dating them just for the sake of it, just to show him. And if he gets mad at you, you can then turn and say, like, um, no. I will continue to date this older man because you're dating someone two years older than me. So if you don't have a problem with it, why should I? You know? And kind of make it sort of like, I mean, I love the pettiness. I like the sort of revenge. I like kind of being petty. So 100% I would do it. See, if it was me, I would 100% do that. I would get an older guy. I would bring it back to the house. I would have him come around more. Just, you know, just casually say certain things, do certain things, maybe hold hands, hug, pretend to kiss and, you know, not actually kiss, but you'd be like, oh, let me, you know, to kind of keep it, so, 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 be cute and silly about it. And then when they get uncomfortable about it, be like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I mean, I'm just learning from my parent after all. I mean, they do say, but sometimes you follow in your parents' footsteps. So I'm just, I'm just learning from you. I mean, you do know best. You do taught me best. That age clearly doesn't matter in this situation. No matter, no matter what's going on. So of course, no, no. And then he can't sit there and be like, uh, that's not right. You shouldn't do it. Because then you could turn around and be like, um, but then aren't you kind of gaslighting yourself because you are also doing what I'm doing? So honey, royal, yes, honey, yes. Be petty, do that stuff to get revenge. He is being creepy, okay? There is a limit with age. Sometimes they say age doesn't matter. Do not take that out of context, okay? Age does not matter when there isn't that big of an age gap. When there's a massive age gap, then that's a problem, okay? It's like a backhanded compliment where you say, age doesn't matter, but within reason. So if there's like three, four years between someone, that's fine, you know? Like, for example, if I'm like 20 and my boyfriend is 25, that is like five years. That's like reasonable because we're both in the twos, you know? We're both in that sort of, we're not in the same ballpark. If someone is, you know, 25 and dating someone 30, again, they're still in that ballpark of they're old enough to make their own decision and choices and their brain is developed, when you are like between the ages of, I would say 10 to 18, 19, you are still going through this stage of learning and having experiences and trying to enjoy life. So you kind of don't, 
you know, you don't kind of actually rationalise being a grown-up, in quotations. But yeah, be petty, girl, be petty. I think that's all we have time for today. I mean, there were some good ones in there. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that being said, happy Halloween, guys. And I will see you for some more videos soon.